24. Psalm 24. You are beautiful in all your ways. His ways are perfect. You are beautiful in all your ways. That's what is making someone's life become tonight. In the name of Jesus. You are beautiful in all your ways. Psalm 24 and verse 7. Please help us, media 24 and verse 7. Let's read together. One to read. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors why because the king of glory seeks to come in the bible tells us in proverbs chapter 4 from verse 18 that the path of the just is akin to a light that shines. Are we together? And the Bible says that it shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. That means that in the economy of God, He does not design men to be better in their yesterday than they should be in their tomorrow. Are we together now? It is in God's design that our lives continue to be unfolding episodes of wonder. That means the version of you yesterday should be far less than the version of you today. When your tomorrow becomes worse than your yesterday, something went wrong. That the path of the just should be as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter even unto the perfect day so we understand from scripture that god is a god of advancement please listen carefully god is a god of progress he desires that we continually make progress it is in making progress that the father is glorified john 15 and verse 8 herein is our father glorified he says that ye bear much fruit by the fruit you produce and the results that you continue to command you will prove that i mentored you well hallelujah the bible says jesus teaching in the beatitudes he called us the light of the world the salt of the earth are we together now he says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but that it is put on a lampstand and it gives illumination to all those who are within so it is God's desire. Please understand this. There should be no confusion as to the fact that God wants us to make progress in life. That God wants us to advance. In as much as our primary assignment, listen very carefully, our primary assignment is the revelation and the glorification of the Son in and through our lives. That all that we do should finally culminate to the revelation of the Son and the glorification of the same but that in so doing our lives should also reflect glory and beauty and color are we together now yes it is not god's design that while we represent him our lives continue to become a shadow of his grace a shadow of his glory no that is the reason why matthiadom and sacrifice means a lot to god because we were not designed in that default state hallelujah but then the bible is also very careful to let us know that life is in levels everybody say levels and that our journey is also dimensional in phases and that interfacing one face and one level and another sometimes can be barriers that make for access i give you an instance 
the the bible the bible is not careful to let us know that even in the design of the temple the outer court there was a partition are we together now that then led you to the inner court then another partition the veil the bible calls it that led you to the most holy place and so the concept of compartmentalizing life into dimensions is something that is consistent with the ways of god that means that while it is true that men can and should transit from one level to the other they must also understand the system that makes for access from one dimension to another dimension are we together now just because you have enjoyed a dimension or you have come to the end of a season does not automatically mean you will enter a new one you must sustain the intelligence in the spirit that can grant men the ability to transit let me tell you the proof of mastery in the spirit is your ability to switch seasons because there are barriers that interface between yesterday and tomorrow and if you do not know what to do when you come to the end of yesterday you will never enter tomorrow are we together first corinthians 16. paul is teaching the church in corinth and then in verse 8 he brings a very important information that would be the basis of my teaching tonight first corinthians 16 from verse 8. it says but i will tarry at ephesus until pentecost verse 9. it says for a great door and effectual he says is opened unto me that means that there is an opportunity there is i need to move to another level but then he says a door is what closes yesterday and opens today that the name of the veil and the mystery that interfaces a man's yesterday and his today and his tomorrow they are called doors a door is not a wooden object that closes a fenced area no a door is the name given to any authorized system of access that interfaces you between where you were and where you need to be it's called a door listen very carefully so he says a great door not just an ordinary door a great door is open before me hmm. doors are not metallic objects doors are not wooden objects architecture is a borrowed system from the realm of the spirit a great door write this down please a door is an authorized system of access two definitions the first is that doors are authorized systems of access a door and a gate all do the same thing the only difference is the span of their reach a door protects rooms gates protect territories please listen carefully they all interface gates interface between a territory and another and doors protect rooms so a gate can be open and you will still not receive what you should have when you enter the gate it you are in the compound but until the door is opened it is important for gates to open but at the point of possession what you need to be open is a door please sit down we have a very long journey this night are we together it says for a great door I'm standing at the edge of my yesterday ready to move into tomorrow but that there is a great door it is important to know what to do with doors i don't have the time but i would have read for you a very strange scripture pastor sir the bible says that in the land of sodom and gomorrah that when two men remember the two angels that came to visit lot are we bible students and then the bible tells us that some of these hedonistic people that they desired to meet with the men and lot even offered to give his daughter said do what you can do but please protect this man and the bible says the people insisted and the angels drew lot in and shut the door and struck them with blindness and the bible says they wearied themselves in front of the door 
in front of a door but it cannot open because they were blind please listen very carefully the reason why tomorrow looks like yesterday is because you didn't know what to do with the door so your tomorrow continues to look like your yesterday when a man's door is closed the only thing that grows in his life is his age nothing else grows nothing else grows are we together a great door and an effectual doors are authorized systems of access access to opportunities access to enlargement access to prosperity access to deliverance now watch this doors just like gates allow for movement understand this it's amazing that doors and gates control movement when a door is opened it can allow people and things to go in people and things to go out are we together now if this door is opened it will allow for movement of people and things i wrote something down here that when a door is closed it brings limitation it brings delay it brings frustration look up please how many of you have lost the key to your door at one point or the other and you stood in front of that door you even have a window that wets your appetite the fruit is looking at you on the table but the key is missing the door is closed and you are standing as agile as strong as you are you become so frustrated you are looking for who to blame who to beat including god because a door was closed it is frustrating to stand before a closed door and yet many people cannot make progress in ministry make progress in life because number one they do not even know that from one realm to the other there are doors and until you know what to do with those doors ladies and gentlemen hear me you may remain in the same position for a long time time does not change things time only reveals Are we blessed it is God's desire that we move from one level to the other but between one face of your life and another spiritually financially ministerially in your family there are doors and every door has a rule of engagement listen very carefully you must know what to do with these doors now the bible another definition of doors that i will give you doors can also represent hindrances doors can also represent not just systems of access but hindrances hindrances limitations that a door can constitute a system of impedance and limitation to a man to stop you from going from one dimension to the other goliath was a door he stopped the peace and the liberty of the nation of israel he came and he roared from morning till night hallelujah so the subject of doors and gates is very important an authorized system of access remember that we want to make progress in life listen i've not found one man who does not intend to make progress with their lives we want to make progress financially we want to make progress in our knowledge of god we want to make progress in career etc that means when you find people limited is not a reflection of their desire i do not know anyone who will intentionally peg themselves at a level we, we are beings of growth we are beings of progress our consolation is that while we serve the purposes of the kingdom we also find ourselves making constructive provable progress are we blessed yes. and god organized this conference to end shame in the life of someone that that whatever continues to make tomorrow look like yesterday we must change it 
Hallelujah. The precepts of the kingdom are precepts of liberty. The Bible lets us know that when we find this truth, they are life to those who find them, he says. This body of knowledge, when you find it, then it liberates. Then your life proves that the light has come because you will arise and you will shine for your light is come. And your rising and your shining is proof that the glory of God has risen upon you. Are we together? Praise the Lord. So we're talking about systems of access here. That from one level to the other, there are doors that stand as they prove to you that you have come to the end of a season and you are about to start another you never see a door in your life until you come to the end of one season look at me when you enter a house assuming you want to go from the kitchen to the living room at the end of that kitchen you find a door that means when you cross that door you are no longer in the kitchen you are in another room you can be in the living room and you want to go to the bedroom is that true now you find another door when you get to that door it signifies the end of the living room and the beginning of another that means the mere fact that you are standing in front of a door already tells you a season is coming to end and another one is standing so doors are signs they are systems of spiritual timing they help you to know when certain seasons are about to come to an end if you are walking and you don't find a door don't give up keep walking when the season in ministry you are at a level where you start you just keep moving prayer fasting nobody seems to place a demand on your grace just keep moving you will get to a point where you will find a door and if you know what to do at that point you will open yourself to a season where you will wave yesterday goodbye and it will wave you back forever a door the red sea was a door it was a door that would separate the nation of israel from egypt forever or otherwise but they stood in front of that red sea it was a door how did the red sea open heater and teeter how do doors open it did not go down the way the red sea opened was proof that it was a door it was not just water because when it opened the land was dry are we together now yes sir. doors it says and be ye lifted o ye everlasting Tonight we are going to pray. I just want to show us one secret. It's not enough to see a door. You must know what to do with it. If that door is a system for access, then you need keys. But if that door is an adversary, you need to know how to deal with it. Either ways, it would demand action. Is someone learning something tonight? So we, we must discern what kind of doors stand before us there are doors that are not demonic it is god's system that interfaces one realm and another what you need for those doors are keys you don't need warfare you need knowledge but there are doors that can be human and spiritual entities they are spirits you don't need keys you need to understand the rules of engagement in the realm of the spirit the bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder that one you don't open it hallelujah if a door is a system of access when you open it you can give the key to your children you can give the key to your children's children so whoever gets there will open it but when doors are demonic even if you survive it your children are still not safe so you break that system down completely listen the walls of jericho did you know that the purpose of destroying jericho was not to occupy it they destroyed jericho and continued moving so what was the significance of jericho why will you come destroy 
a town and then keep moving that meant that Jericho was not obstructing their movement but Jericho was a door both a gate and a door and for Jericho the Bible says it fell it sank so that it was no more are you learning something tonight when you come to the end of a financial season there is always a door if you know what to do it opens you to a new level when you come to the end of a door in ministry you must know what to do please ladies and gentlemen do not trivialize what i am telling you you will recycle pain again and again until you know what to do when you stand in front of doors i say it again time does not change anything one day go better is just a wise saying a sociological wise saying you will need keys or you will need a battle axe either ways when you stand before a door the first thing is discernment is this door to be opened with a key or is this door to be broken down that is why you can have dreams and in that dream you see that you stepped into a next level already but you wake up physically and you are in your yesterday god continues to introduce your tomorrow and tells you heaven has cleared the way for you but simply because you do not know what to do with the doors that are in front of you in ministry you remain grounded in business you remain grounded while you are i mean it continues to happen again and God brought us in this conference in the name of Jesus that whatever door stands before you if it's to be open let it be open if it's to be crossed let it be crossed down to pieces please sit down be ye lifted everlasting doors when doors are closed listen when you stand before a door and you have the key to open it you do not fear there is no stress there is no anxiety you can even be talking with someone the door to your car the door to your safe the door to anything you can be talking while you open the door because it will respect the turning of the key or whatever method it is hallelujah i will show you one mystery tonight that can destroy or open it doesn't matter what form the door comes if the door is a principle it can open it if the door is an enemy it can crush it just one and then we pray because sometimes the urgency in your spirit will not even allow you to find out whether the door requires a key you've stayed there so long you just want it open are we blessed <laughs> revelation chapter three somebody pray in the spirit while you're done from verse seven and eight shalaprando skebaruzia tahashala karuzia tahash hallelujah and to the angel of the church in philadelphia write these things saith he that is holy he that is true he that had the key of david we'll deal with that tomorrow it says he that openeth he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth no no just just keep just keep that scripture verse verse 8 says go to verse 8 i know thy works it says behold i have set before you an open door i have set before you an open door and gives you a guarantee that no man can shut it i have set before you an open door and no man can shut it 
praise the Lord. Jesus is teaching. Let's go to Luke 11 now. As we unravel this key. Jesus is teaching. And we'll start from verse 1. We're reading the first 10 verses very quickly. Luke chapter 11. Look up please. This is what we call the Lord's Prayer. I hope you know that this is what we know as the Beatitudes. Teaching them on the principles of the kingdom and in one of the lecture sessions jesus is teaching on prayer and he says the bible says it came to pass that as he was what praying in a certain place when he ceased one of the disciples said unto him lord teach us to pray as john taught his disciples stop there please stop there verse one go back to verse one keep it there they they were not prayerless their prayer was not producing results this was not the issue of prayerlessness. This was the issue of accuracy. Prayer that produces results. They noticed that there was something he always did. In prayer. Through prayer. By prayer. And it made all doors to open up to him. And they said, teach us that secret. We have also been praying. But we notice that our prayer is not profitable. Our prayer is barren. It's largely a product of rituals with no power and no result. Teach us your formula. What have you captured in your prayer ministry that is responsible for the open doors that follow? Are we together? Verse 2. He said unto them, When ye pray, Jesus now, when ye pray, say, our father which art in heaven hallowed be your name that's not what i'm talking about thy kingdom come thy will be done as in heaven so in earth uh-huh give us this day our daily bread verse 4 and forgive us our sin as we forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil now verse 5 is where my story starts please give us from verse 5 verse 5 and he said unto them now listen to this story now which of you shall have a friend and shall go to that friend at midnight and say unto him friend lend me three loaves verse 6 for a friend of mine is what in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to set before him read verse 7 if you're a christian one two read and he from within shall answer and say trouble me not why for the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give thee keep verse 7 look at an interesting scripture the reason why i cannot rise and give you is because the door is closed i am inside you are outside there is a barrier that blocks what you need is available the bread you need for the journey is there but the door is now closed a man stands at midnight and says it is time for me to move to another level i know that there is favor in that house i know there is speed in that house i know that there is a greater dimension of grace and the friend says i would have given you but the fact is the door is shut and between me and you my realm of abundance and your realm of need there is a door it is midnight and the door is shut do not trouble me let me show you what to do when a door refuses to open see the bible says the things that are written aforetime it says they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope are, are we together now and he from within shall answer he answers from where from within between heaven and earth there is a door if you do not know how to open that door you will walk under a closed heaven because even heaven can close was it not jesus who was baptized and there was something he did and the bible says and the heavens opened so the heavens over you is a door elijah knew what to do with it he could open it and close it at will
are we blessed and he from within shall say and your breakthrough and your lifting and your next dimension shall say trouble me not why the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give thee i cannot rise and bless thee i cannot rise and promote you it's not that what you need is not there but there is a door that has been shut verse 8 i say to you holy ghost christian center though he will not rise and give him because he's his friend yet that means there is a condition that means there is an exemption yet because of his importunity the word importunity is the word persistence is the word staying power because of his staying power he will rise and give him as many as he he will not only give him he will give him as many as he verse 9 I say unto you therefore ask parousia katabalasiata and it shall be given to you number two seek and you shall find but when you stand before a door knock and it shall be give us that scripture again verse 9 ask and you shall receive this is jesus teaching seek and you shall find but believers when you stand before closed doors knock he didn't say use your hand to knock the hand is not the only instrument you can knock with he says knock an intelligent person will say how you don't assume that he meant use your hand and bang the door knock he says and if you knock well it shall be opened unto you because there is a law and that law is in verse 10 for everyone is someone here he didn't say preachers he didn't say prayer warriors he didn't say women everyone that asketh receiveth number two everyone that seeketh find it number three everyone that knocketh it shall be open that means there is a condition that can make a door that would not open to open this is jesus teaching about open doors jesus acknowledged the fact that it is true that doors can close and that when they close don't trivialize them they can trap you in a position and in a realm forever that when you find a door that is closed knock knock on that door and it guarantees that it will open let's see how doors open colossians 4 and verse 3 let's learn how to knock is someone ready to read one to read while praying for us that god would open unto us a door so how do we knock it says praying for us and in that prayer you ask god to open that door while praying for us that god will open unto us a door of utterance a door of favor a door of speed a door of your next level spiritually in prayer a man can compel a door that should not open to open hallelujah
so when prayer becomes effectual it becomes a weapon that can open doors it becomes a weapon that can open doors please listen to me very carefully it is true that prayer can open doors it is true that a man can pray the barriers that stand between your yesterday and your tomorrow you can pray them away you can pray them out of your life hallelujah you can pray them out of your life first thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18 popular scripture but very powerful and prophetic first thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18 please read with me believers ready read wherefore we would have come unto you even i paul once and again but satan so satan himself can become a door that hinders people you want even i once and again the favor tried in january tried in february to come just like god showed you it should come but it still has not gotten to you and he said i tried once and again but satan hindered us satan hindered us james chapter 5 and verse 13 apostle james is teaching us on effectual prayer 5 and verse 13 he says is any among you afflicted let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms is any sick among you let him call on the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing with oil in the name of the lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the lord shall raise him up and if he hath committed any sins they shall be forgiven him verse 16 confess your faults to one another he says and pray for one another that he might be healed the b part says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much that means the prayer of a righteous man is not careless prayer the prayer of a righteous man carries energy and power in the realm of the spirit then 17 says for elijah it talks about elijah please give it to us next verse 17 it says elijah was a man subject to like passion that means he was in every way human but he prayed earnestly that it might not rain he closed the door that interfaced the earth and the heavens and there was no rain about the space of three years and six months verse 18 and he prayed again and heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit look at the way prayer opens doors between watch this between the earth that you see look at me the surface and beneath it even agriculture teaches us that the earth has layers and that all those layers don't function the same whatever of the earth you can pray vision inside you to come out you can pray a dream inside you to come out and thrive you can pray an anointing locked up within you and pray like a seed planted in the earth look at me when you plant a seed you cover it but when it begins to grow it will push and begin to beckon on the door to open that's how songs can be in your spirit did the bible not say out of your belly shall flow but when it flows there is a gate that covers it because every river did you not know the conversation listen Hush. let me show you something job 38 job 38 there are mysteries in this life oh. job 38 let's start from verse 1 the lord answered job out of the whirlwind verse 2 who is it that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge verse 3 gird up now thy loins like a man for i will demand of thee and answer thou me question one where was thou 
when i laid the foundations of the earth declare if thou hast understanding question 2 verse 5 who had laid the measures thereof if thou knowest question 3 who had stretched the line upon it look at verse 4 it says who were upon the foundations therefore fastened verse, verse 4 go, go to 4 please where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth declare if thou hast understanding 5 it says who had laid the measures thereof if thou knowest or who had stretched the line upon it and has 6 it says whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened or who had laid the cornerstone follow me carefully 7 it says when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy I don't want to even talk about what he's talking about here verse 8 who shut up the sea with that means the river you are looking at like this there is a reason why it does not come there is a door that means every flood witchcraft found a way of opening the doors because according to God's design there were doors when it break forth as it issued out of the womb go to verse 9 clarity to that verse when I made the cloud a garment thereof and the thick darkness a swaddling band verse 10 it says I break up for it my my decreed place and set what bars and doors 11 and I said hitherto shall thou come but no further and here shall thou proud waves be stay God did not design our system just like that there are doors spiritually there are doors that means water should not just come to kill you because he put doors if that water floods to kill you believe me someone manipulated the laws of the spirit and made that door to open up It is possible for a family to all be gathered in front of a door but because there is no system of opening that door the father becomes old in front of that door the children come and join him in front of that door please hear me there are people in ministry they have been in ministry for many years standing in front of a door and everybody comes to join them there but tonight in the name of Jesus we have come by the power of the Holy Spirit we insist that certain doors be opened you know when a door has opened because your experience must change it is true financially spiritually when the door of a higher level of grace comes upon your life you know it graces are separated by doors there are rules of engagement in every realm you are in the same realm in ministry in terms of the anointing something is wrong there should be an ever increasing dimension of grace i should see you and know you have grown that certain doors have opened unto you if you are in a house if you want to eat and the only door that you can access is the door to the bedroom you are in trouble if you are sleeping good for you but if you are hungry you must know how to open that door if you want to use the toilet and the only door that is open is the door to the living room there's going to be a lot of jumping and shouting in that place and it's amazing that all doors don't open the same way there are doors you turn the key three times are we together there are others because it has so spoiled you put a chain we don't even know where the end of the chain is there is a way you touch it it shifts and you open the door there are others you just use a card and it opens there are others you use your voice and it opens you have to know how the door opens just because you open yesterday's door does not mean you will open tomorrow's door so every time they stood before a door and a gate they depended on God to give them a strategy for Egypt the door opens by walking through to pass the Red Sea for Jericho the door opens by the shout the healer that shout opens it but you can stand before other doors and not know what to do there are times that you stand still it's God that comes to fight for you 
there are times you will go around by yourself it's in your shouts that he comes Bible says doors were put to the sea I hope you know that abundance comes from the sea this is a prophetic church abundance comes from the sea go to Genesis 1 Genesis 2 you will see there that the plants the trees and the birds it was the water that brought them forth water in scripture is not just symbolic of people water is also symbolic of abundance that means that there are doors that are put to certain dimensions of blessings that we can access please listen to me i wonder what door has stood before you that god brought you to this conference because that door has to be opened i wonder what door in ministry even spiritually There are doors of favor there are doors of lifting you can be favored but to what degree hallelujah if men bless you once a year is still some level of favor but that's not the best of God you can get to a point where he daily loads you with benefits how many of you know that every 24 hours at the end of it there is also a door days are partitioned not just by the what they call it the gregorian calendar what they call it there are doors so between 12 midnight and 1201 there is a door just because your clock says 1201 does not mean you have entered in another day no it's only your watch that entered please listen to me I teach you prophetic truths you can say good afternoon good morning what's today's date today is the 11th you are only saying it because of what you have seen but prophetically the date for you can still be 1997 please believe what I'm telling you and any result of 98 99 your life will reject it because it is unlawful give us this day and since you are in that day you will only get for that day the daily bread is for the day you are entering in and if you are in 1997 you cannot get the blessings of 2020 so there must be an acceleration where doors are open give us this day I know why your life looks like yesterday are you really sure you are in today I know why your finances looks like 10 years ago are you really sure you are in today because every day God creates there are treasures that make for the day he says the daily bread don't carry the bread and save it he told the nation of israel it was a lesson because every day i am benevolent enough to put the supplies for that realm so by the time you have five children and prophetically you still have the destiny and the financial level of a young man who is not even married you will find out there is bank you will never have enough because the day you are in prophetically is it not in your bible that a thousand days on earth in the realm of the spirit can still be one day it is not just heaven standard the realm of the spirit has a system of caging you can be in march april may physically but prophetically you are still in december please listen to me let me show you the mysteries of the kingdom have you seen now don't feel offended respectfully speaking have you seen a little child who does not grow well and he's 10 years or 20 years but he's still you, you understand what i'm saying 
you see that condition now you can't deny the fact that the child is 10 years because he has lived every day and night day and night day and night for 10 years but the reality of that child's situation has refused to honor his growth the days so a man's life can dishonor the times that he has faced that you can say i have been working for 16 years but prophetically the realm of the spirit says we reject that information as far as we are concerned you are only two days old as far as favor is concerned if physically listen the realm of the spirit teaches the physical realm teaches us how the realm of the spirit work it is possible for a 40 year old man to not walk it's an anomaly but it is real that means it can happen in the realm of the spirit too you can say i have been 25 years in christ you are right but you are wrong prophetically you'll be surprised that you are just celebrating two years your results is that of a two-year-old person we have some prayers to do this night too. when he blessed abraham he said in the blessing of abraham he said i will make thy name great listen your name is not you your name can be great whereas you are not great and if you are not great to match your name one day you will bring your name down god makes your name great as an act of his mercy so that you grow quickly to match that name solomon had a great name before sheba but she did not trust that he was a great man she came to verify in the palace when she saw everything she said ah half of this what not told me that means as a man of god you can have a great name by what someone said but the day they meet you will your greatness match the name they had you can have a great name as a ceo and the day people look at you they say i'm disappointed no this man's name is greater than him Are we blessed when I found out that just because day and night is happening to you does not mean you are moving believe me notice how many things happen in the Bible at midnight at midnight at midnight at midnight the gates that closes yesterday yesterday is a deep mystery it's not just time passing life is divided into past present future and they are all separated by doors it is the reason why god gave you an ability to still go back into the past you can use imagination and go back into the past and your present will start feeling the impact of the past you can start crying is that true you can watch a movie that was acted 10 years ago and get emotional now the emotion of 10 years ago appears in your today and physical tears start coming out that means the failure of yesterday can follow you and enter your today makes today like yesterday enters your tomorrow makes tomorrow like yesterday enters next week makes next week like yesterday the same way when god restores he can carry everything that should happen yesterday that did not happen bring it into your tomorrow listen the greatest restoration is not money if all you receive as restoration is is uh, what they call it now areas you were not restored whoever can restore time really restore and i will restore thee yes no matter what you lose if you don't lose time you did not lose anything people have lost billions in deals and investments and in less than a year they came back people lost parts of their bodies and by medical procedures they had it back but when you lose time you really lost look at me there are doors that have refused to open to us by age 30 by age 40 by age 50 there are certain doors that are supposed to have opened you don't build a house at 75 it's not a blessing 
It's like a man of 50 years trying to write Waek. Yes, you say no knowledge is a waste, but that man will be sleeping in class because according to the program of life, he should be resting. So one of the things that will happen to us tonight by the Spirit is that while we are praying, there are, you will be stepping into doors by the Spirit. Please believe me. Let me tell you this. There are people seated here prophetically you are not yet in 2020 believe what i'm telling you it's just your body and your awareness that is in 2020 the prophetic gives birth to the physical realm my brothers and my sisters hear me the same way there are people who are in 2020 but prophetically they are in 2030 so the results you will see does not show like there is a recession the results you see in their life does not show like the, the bible talks about men who have tasted of the powers of the ages to come david was in the old testament but he translated to the realm where he said the lord said to my lord that was the coronation service of jesus when he resurrected from the dead the lord said to my lord sit down at thy right hand listen that means a man can be 24 and your favor can be that of a 60 year old man because you found a way of opening doors and you said i need to i need to catch up my, my father could not open that door my brothers could not if i move at my pace my family will not be saved so joseph goes ahead and then becomes a prime minister and brings his father his brothers isaiah 61 we're about to pray verse 1 the spirit of the lord is upon me because the lord has anointed me to preach good